Hey guys, welcome to another Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire Wi-Fi battle brought to you by myself, Repel Games. We are up against opponent Juned today, and I brought Dikirim Black, the Heat Trans, Scyther, Espeon, Whimsicott, and Lantern. My opponent, on the other hand, has the Gliscor, Metagross, possibly Mega, Charizard, possibly Mega, Gyarados, possibly Mega, Tyranitar, possibly Mega, and Greninja. So, one good look at my opponent's team. It's, uh, well, it's 4 out of 6. Could be potentially Mega, and not to mention, everything is just straight up threatening. Like, everything. Pretty much in his entire team is primarily OU, with the exception of Greninja. I believe Greninja now is Uber, but um, nonetheless, this is one heated battle, so let's get right onto it. So Juned is gonna lead off with Greninja. It's a very nice lead. Most Greninjas are excellent leads, obviously. It does give me a very scary fear that this Greninja is, of course, Focus Sashed. And yes, it is. And I do outspeed this Greninja simply because my Kirin Black carries the Choice Scarf. That's how I like to run my Kirin Black. And this is a Toxic Spike Setter. So I thought, you know what, it's a little too obvious for me to go for another Fusion Bolt. So I thought I'm just gonna go into Espeon. And not to mention, I could actually bounce back, you know, any hazards I want. And as a matter of fact, he does go for spikes, and that's great because now I did bounce back a layer of spikes. And I thought, well, I know for a fact Greninja outspeeds me, and Greninja is a dark type, so he can actually just go for either like a Night Slash or a Dark Pulse. And SBM will not appreciate that. So I'm gonna go into Scyther here, uh, just because Scyther is actually a really nice wall. My Scyther is carrying the Evio Light, and he is heavily invested in HP, so that'll take care of that, uh, you know, nice slash pretty darn well. Unfortunately, my opponent will go for another, uh, Spikes, but hey, it's all good. At least I finished off this Greninja, and I did get to bounce back one layer of Spikes. Here comes the Metagross now, and it's gonna get hurt by Spikes, of course, so... I'm not really sure what to do here, um, you know, I'm really fearing like a Metagross's uh, Thunder Punch or Ice Punch. But turns out he went for a Hammer, I'm not sure why, probably expecting I was going to switch out. No biggie, right? I mean, usually, you don't really see Scythers fighting against a Metagross, so he thought I was going to switch out, but no, I am not. Now here comes the Gliscor, that's great, because obviously, even if I do start setting up with Swords Dances, this Gliscor will eat up Scyther's attacks really darn well, so unfortunately I'm like, well, I don't want to get walled, I don't want to get knocked off, and I don't want to get poisoned. So I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to bring in uh, Whimsicott. I mean, I'm already going to be poisoned, at least it's not badly poisoned, but I'll still be poisoned. Hoping that he might just go for like a knockoff or a substitute. I really was hoping that the Gliscor would go for a substitute, so that I could trap him with Encore, with Whimsicott. But that is not the case, and my opponent's gonna switch out. And that's cool, that's actually kinda smart of him, because he probably thought I was gonna go for an Encore, which I was, because I wanted to trap him into, well, knockoff. And um, I thought he's gonna go for like a Bullet Punch or a Meteor Mash, and Whimsicott will not appreciate that. I still wanna preserve my Whimsicott after all, so I'm going to bring up my Metagross counter, and it's really funny because it's just a Scyther, you know? Like, what could you possibly do with a Scyther? But at the same time, my Scyther is pretty defensive, so it I guess it's a nice counter for a lot of things. Except for Gliscor. I'm going to take this opportunity and just go for a Roost, because I really thought, you know, he's going to switch out the Metagross. So why not and just heal up a little bit? Again, I don't want to get knocked off or poisoned, so I'm going to bring out my Whimsicott. And keep in mind, I'm slowly dying with Whimsicott. Whimsicott has been switching out a little too frequent, so yeah, he's uh, slowly killing Whimsicott. And honestly, from this range, I can't do anything now, but let's go for a Leaf Seed and, you know, expect this Gliscor to die. 
it's kind of sad, you know? I mean, like, Whimsicott was supposed to just, like, rock, you know? He's supposed to, like, kick ass, but... It was just a little bit too much residual damage, just simply because my opponent does have one layer of spikes and one layer of toxic spikes, so... I take this opportunity to just go for these stealth rocks. Now, one fire blast will actually do a lot to this Gliscor. But instead, I just went for stealth rocks because not only does my opponent now have stealth rocks, but earlier I did bounce back a layer of spikes. So my opponent's side of the field does have stealth rocks and one layer of spikes. So I think hey, that's kind of cool, you know? So I guess we're sort of even now in terms of hazards. Now I'm going to go back and Kiram, and why did I bring up my Kiram? Because honestly, that's the only thing that can really take care of this Gliscor. And my Kiram obviously is carrying, you know, an ice move. So he does go for that Earthquake, it does a decent amount. Thank god I actually still have Leech Seed. I mean, it's not going to do too much, it's not going to heal too much, since I am poisoned. Just regularly poisoned, not badly poisoned though. And speaking of poison, this Gliscor will get that poison heal, so it is revealed, yes, I do have that Choice Scarf Ice Beam, and that will finish off Gliscor, and I'm so glad my opponent did not expect that. Normally, I guess you won't, because, you know, he saw that my Kiram was more of like a physical attacker, because I had Fusion Bolt, but no, I would still like an Ice Beam. And I'm so glad I went for Stealth Rocks, simply because of this Charizard. So. Expecting like a fire attack or, you know, really anything, right? I'm just gonna send out my Heatran. But it turns out it's a Megazard X. Not a Y, but a Megazard X. And that what really frightens me is that most Megazard X do carry Earthquake. Or some form of Earthquake. Thank god he went for Flare Blitz. I just had to kind of guess and bet that he didn't have Earthquake. And he went for an Outrage, so judging from that point, I'm pretty sure he doesn't even have Earthquake. So that gives me a free turn to stay in, eat up one Outrage, and finish off Charizard with an Earth Power. Again, I guess it's nice to fight against a Charizard X, simply because Charizard X is no longer a flying type, so he is weak to, you know, Earth Power. Gyarados is coming, he uh, probably would just kill me, but I thought, let's just go for Fire Blast. I did not expect to outspeed this Gyarados, but... Now that I think about it, I'm pretty sure this Gyarados is, in fact, Adamant Nature. That is why my Heatran outsped this Gyarados. Again, I wanted to just stay in with Heatran and do as much as I can because I was really fearing that my opponent went for a Dragon Dance. But luckily for me, he didn't. I would take a Waterfall over a Dragon Dance any day, even if my Heatran does go down. I'm gonna send out my Revenge Killer. Basically, my Kirin Black acts as a Revenge Killer. You know, he's fast. He hits like a truck, and you know, his moves are pretty darn diverse. I overkilled this Gyarados, obviously, with a Fusion Bolt. I didn't see a point to not go into Fusion Bolt, you know, simply because I already finished off my opponent's Gliscor. So, the Tyranitar does come out now, and um, I, again, I'm really fearing Dragon Dances. So, obviously, I'm not switching out, you know, like... If my opponent decides to go for a Dragon Dance, I'm not just going to give him a free turn to go for a Dragon Dance. So I'm going to do as much as I can and just basically let my Kirin Black die. But, yes, he does go for a Dragon Dance and that's very scary because I'm not sure who outspeeds who now. I have Choice Scarf, but my opponent just went for the Dragon Dance. So, actually, I live with like 3 HP, so I could go for another attack and luckily... I still outspeed the Mega Tyranitar, <laughs> and I'm so glad I did. Had I m not outsped this Mega Tyranitar, this Mega Tyranitar could potentially outsped and kill Kiram and then sweep my whole team. And of course, Sandstorm will take me down, but I am so glad Kiram finished off that Tyranitar. Kiram, you did your thing, man. I am so proud of you. Again, here comes the Metagross, and honestly, that's fine. Now I can actually start setting up because the Gliscor has died. But I see no point because this is actually my opponent's last Pokemon. So there's really no point for me to set up however his Zen Headbutts are doing over half. Despite that I am defensive. 
So I totally, totally underestimated Metagross and totally overestimated my Scyther. I mean, Scyther is really great and all, but yeah, Zen Headbutts are doing quite a lot. And um, I'm just going to keep spamming Roost in hopes that my opponent will miss my, the Zen Headbutt because obviously Zen Headbutt, I believe, only has 85% accuracy. And luckily, speaking of the devil, <laughs> my opponent finally did miss. So that gives me another opportunity to go for a Brick Break. And from this range, uh, I think one more Brick Break shall kill it. And he does nail that critical hit. So unfortunately, that will one-shot me. Had it not been a one, sh you know, a critical, Scyther would have definitely survived. But I'm just going to pretend on my Espeon. It outspeeds. I'm going to go for that Hidden Power Fire. Yes, you know it. I love Espeon. I love Offensive Espeon. Honestly, I think uh, Dual Screen's Espeon is great, but uh, I like Offensive Espeon's as well. So there you have it. Hidden Power Fire coming from Espeon and finishing off the battle thing. Thank you, June. That was an amazing battle. I uh, hope you guys love this team. If you guys like my Kieran Black revenge killing and Scyther eating up attacks and Espeon finishing up the battle, please let me know by liking this video. And uh, always, make sure to subscribe, guys. If you guys don't even have a YouTube account, well, now's the time to create one. It literally only takes like 30 seconds to create a YouTube account. So that way you guys can be the very first people to watch more of my Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire Wi-Fi battles. Thank you guys, I'm out of here.